we're going to face some dark times as a nation. I, I genuinely believe that. I think we have an opportunity in the next four to six years to prevent kinetic American forces, countrymen on countrymen, from ever meeting. And I think that is incumbent upon all of us. Although I have no doubt that we'd be victorious if that ever happened. But remember, that would be, that would be so immoral and wrong. If we just said, hey, you know what, let's just, let's just kick off a civil war and then we'll, we'll, we'll just go ahead and go to that point. No, my friends, we were called to be innocent as doves, yes, but we were also called to be shrewd as snakes. And we as conservatives, it's time for us to get shrewd. It's time for us, in, in Genesis, it talks about taking dominion of the earth. You read that original word. I mean, it means go out and take control of it. Take, dominate the earth that you're given. Fill it. And my friends, the only way we're going to do that is if we stop playing this lackluster, milk toast defensive game. That's uh, Representative Mass in Cawthorne, North Carolina. Um, again, going back to the well on talking about violence, civil war, taking up arms against our fellow Americans. Oh, but I don't mean it that way. I mean, I would hate for us to take up arms against our fellow American, but our fellow American needs to be have arms taken up against him. But I don't mean take up against him. I mean take it up against him. He keeps going through the same cycle of of pushing supporters to feel the need to think they need to spark some kind of civil war against their political opponents or honestly, other Americans who vote differently. That's really what it is, not even a political opponent because most of these people aren't political. They're just following this team mentality and I gotta shoot my other teammate because the civil war has to start now. Either way it goes, he was also speaking at Talking Point USA's America Fest or Freedom Fest or Patriot Fest or one of those, all the same. Um, and, and was still talking about more civil war. But this isn't even the first time he was pushing these types of things. So um, uh, so before, there's an article here where he said, Madison Cawthorn is openly talking about civil war at this point. This is previous to that, this isn't just now. But he talked about bloodshed and suggested, as he did just on Tuesday, we need to pick up arms to defend this whole thing that Donald Trump is pushing about being uh, cheated out of his election victory. Also in August, Representative Madison Cawthorn calls January 6th riders political prisoners. And he warns of bloodshed at this other event there. Um, so I'm sorry, and also there was also a board of elections meeting. I almost forgot about this one. He said, if our election systems continue to be rigged and continue to be stolen, that is going to be lead to one place and that's bloodshed, great. Uh, and I will tell you, as much as I'm willing to defend our liberty at all costs, there's nothing I would dread doing more than having to pick up arms against a fellow American. Um, no, I'm not reading script of what he just, what you just heard him say at this talking points event. He says it over and over. It over again and thinks it's just a fun way to get reelected. It's it's a it's a side show to make sure he has support from the most hate, hateful people in the country. Either way it goes, we're still seeing this march to some kind of civil war that honestly, David, I, I don't know what that would look like. Well, I think nobody needs to pick up arms. They need to pick up stones and rocks because if Madison Cawthorn is gonna quote Genesis, let's talk about the fact that this talking turning points conference happened on the Sabbath. And Genesis says that you should, if you violate the Sabbath, you should be stoned to death with rocks. So maybe we pick, pick up some stones and start throwing them at the stage. These people are such hypocrites, they're such morons. And the fact of the matter is, Madison Cawthorn is not gonna pick up an arm or pick up a weapon and be the first one to fire it. He's not even gonna be at the back of the line. He's gonna be hiding in his little house, cheering on on TV or on social media, the people who are doing the fighting who are shedding the blood. He just, he's not gonna be involved in that. These guys talk a, a tough game, like I'm a tough guy. We might have to pick up arms, we might have to fight, we might have to have bloodshed. He doesn't know the first thing about it. And the people who do know anything about bloodshed, are the people who we should be listening to, the people who are former veterans, people who are police, law enforcement, people who have seen other people die in the streets. Those are the people who are saying, you know what? We're gonna resolve our differences, but we're gonna do it peacefully. We're not gonna listen to these morons like Madison Cawthorn. Uh, unfortunately though, you have young impressionable audiences like the Turning Points USA folks, younger college students who think, oh yeah, maybe maybe we need a civil war. I mean, it's, it's insanity. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure how much thought goes behind that. But again, as you point out, these impressionable minds at this particular event, that they know, they know that's that's why it's set up in this particular way. That's why they talk about how CRT and, and mask wearing and everything that's happening in our schools is indoctrinating our children with responsibility and knowledge. So they know that teaching kids right and wrong, or at least reality and, and BS is a thing. So they're pushing hard for making sure that they're brainwashing enough minds to think the way they do, so they can continue this progression of hatred and violence and exclusionary policies. But just to highlight that, Trump Jr. was saying similar things. Part of what Cawthorn was saying in that 
video we just played was we're being peaceful in a way. We're being peaceful, but we got to stop doing that. Trump Jr. also at the same event, this is just consistently getting pushed. Was saying, yeah, that whole Bible thing about turn the other cheek, we tried that. No, you didn't, first of all, but we tried that. And it's about time we stopped doing that because we keep losing. What have they lost? They still said they haven't lost the election that they did lose. And after losing it, they're still controlling the agenda as we see as they're pulling Joe Manchin around to do their bidding. So they're first of all, they haven't lost anything, but he'll say that and then tell them we gotta stop turning the other cheek and start fighting. This is a constant, constant movement. And to highlight that one more time, a great friend of the show, Lauren Windsor with the undercurrent, as she's been getting a lot of these underground videos. She spoke to Louis Gohmert at an event as well and posed of course as a conservative, her and, and her and her colleague there. And they asked Louis Gohmert about potential violence, watch this. I was there in the six, and thank you for fighting for all of us, man. Uh, yeah. Was there more we could have done? Yeah, there's a lot more, but it needs a lot more people doing it than just a handful of us. Keep fighting for yeah, us. Yeah, they just so. And are we getting towards like Second Amendment solutions at some point? It's gonna keep happening. Yeah. Or are we gonna fix it? You think we are? Well, I'm still in it because I think we can. And thank you for fighting. Thank you, sir. Yeah, I appreciate. It. Maybe we need some Second Amendment solutions. Uh, and he gave the guys a little nod and said, hey, we need more. We can't just have a few doing it, Louis Gohmert says. We need more. I need more foot soldiers. I need more violent people. I need you guys to think about your Second Amendment, which of course, I guess is based in shooting fellow Americans when you're mad at them. That's the Republican Party we have right now. It's across and, the board, it seems. Yeah, and that, that's the theme that runs through all of this. And that is running through the party uh, like no tomorrow. And that is the theme is we can't win on our ideas. We can't convince Democrats and most of the country to support our ideas. We just have these disagreements. And so, you know what? The way we settle our disagreements is we've got to fight them. We have to have a violent confrontation because they can't win on the merits. They can't win in a civilized debate. That's a pretty dangerous place to be. And it reminds me of, you know, the, the four and five year olds on the playground when little Johnny is accused of breaking the rules. Instead of recognizing that he broke the rules or that he's losing the game, he picks a fight with another kid or he grabs the ball and tries to go home. That's where the petulant Republican Party is now. And we're seeing it with Louis Gohmert, we're seeing it with Fox News, we're seeing it with Madison Cawthorn. It goes on and on. And at a certain point, somebody, Liz Cheney, <clears throat> maybe somebody else who's, who's sort of more rational thinking, they're trying to stand up and say, no, there are basic rules and institutions we have to respect and violence. Violent confrontation is not the answer, but I fear for how this Republican battle is going to turn out and what it means for the direction of the country. We'll see. Uh, it seems that violence is uh, seems to be the way. For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is. So you don't miss anything.